Let's chop it up with your boy Zaz. Hey. Uh, you ready? No chase this year. Hey. All right, this is Let's Chop It Up with Zaz, and this is Big French. What's going on, Big French? What's good, Zaz? Chilling. Thanks for having me, bro. No problem, brother. That's what we do, man. That's what we do here, man. So pretty much we're going to be focusing on you tonight. You know what I mean? Going through your whole career and actually mm-hmm. letting the people know who Big French is, man. Because you don't you don't cover a lot of ground out here, brother. I'm trying, man. You know, a lot of ground out here, man. You a humble, you a humble dude, too, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, keep it humble, you know. You know what I mean? So. So tell me what you been up to, man. Man, I mean, if anybody that's following, you know, I've been doing a lot of work with um Lord Mob, Fleet Lord, you know, some things here and there with Griselda, you know, Benny yes. the Butcher, Fly God, you know. That's you big. Know. That's big. Conway, man. can't forget Conway, you know. Just, can't forget Conway. You know, doing my thing, you know, getting where yeah. I fit in. You got that right, brother. You definitely fit in there. That's for sure, man. And right. you're the and you're the man behind the the sound of Lord right. Mob, right? You know they what call I mean. Me the overseer, you know what I'm saying? Because I I make sure everything sounds good, everything is mixed and mastered. I handle all of that. You know what I'm saying? Right here at Mad Bull Studios in Harlem. That's right. That's right. Let people know, man. You know what I mean? If they and need for anything. 2020, we on we on album number ten. You know what I mean? That's a lot of ground, man, to cover, brother. Yeah, man, we've been doing doing some big things this year. You know, what I mean, during during a pandemic, <laughs> Fleet came by, dropped the bag, was like, "Yo, we working." <laughs> yeah, man, pretty much. <laughs> so tell us how how did that connection come about between you and Fleet and and Flea Lord? Um, I met Flea. It had to be about what we had now, twenty twenty. So it was probably around like twenty seventeen, I think. Um. You know, and uh, he came through. Um, he came to do a session with a, with another guy who used to work with me, but you know, we ain't gonna talk about that because he's no longer around or down. You know what I mean? Hey. So anyway, this individual brought Flea Lord to the studio, and, and when we met, we just kind of instantly clicked. You know what I'm saying? This was one of those things where, like, yo, like I like the way this guy works. I, he liked the way I work, and you know, and when we recorded them and I mixed it, he was like, yo, I like the way I sound. Like, you know, I guess he had never been to another studio that really took the time on his actual vocal. You know, some dudes will record you and you recorded and that's it. You know what I'm saying? But I made sure to really get him in a place where I thought, you know, he needed to be. And here we are, you know, I guess like all together, we probably have about like album 19 or 20. You know what I mean? We've been doing a lot of work. Gee. You know what I mean, his, 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 I mean, outside of thing like Lord Talk One, everything else has been recorded, mixed and mastered by me, you know? Ain't that something? That's a lot of ground, brother. That's a lot of ground. So how do you stay, how do you stay consistent like that? You know, cause, cause Flea's the kind of guy that, you know, he comes with it, man. Like he's ready to work. You know, he just did an album. He's ready to do another one now. You know what I mean? So to yeah, keep I mean, consistency going, it's just the work ethic. You know, this guy is a fucking beast when it comes to work. You know what I mean? Anytime I want to work, he want to work. You know, and it's just one of those things that he'll lock in, and we could easily knock down four or five songs a day. Ooh. That's a lot you know, of people come in. We roll up a bunch of this and we light up and we and get busy. It. Go to you town, know? man. You go to town. Exactly. Definitely, man. Definitely. You know? So how yeah, it just- feels, how it feels to know, because you you like I said, you've been around for a long time, and we're gonna get into that later. Okay. But 
for you to be around this long, French, right? Uh -huh. And for you to be able to oversee one of the biggest names right now, because to me, Flea's one of the biggest names right now in hip hop, man. And yeah. for you to be in the middle of all that, man, how'd that feel, bro? I mean, I don't get all hyped over it, you know what I mean? Because Flea is my friend, you know what I mean? He's my friend. He's not just an artist who comes to my studio, you know what I'm saying? He's my friend, you know what I mean? It's like, outside of the music, outside of this, there's a, we like family at this point. There's no, you know, you spend that many hours in the studio with, with the same person, you know what I mean? It, it, it's bound to be like a closeness, you know what I'm saying? That's my boy, that's my little brother. That's right. You know what I mean? So, you know, it, like I'm happy for him, you know what I'm saying? But with everything that's yes. going on, you know what I'm, saying? I'm happy. Yes. Like right now he's out, he's out in California with DJ Muggs, you know what I'm saying? Man, listen. Like, in, a, in a few minutes, uh, my email is gonna go off and it's gonna be some sessions with Flea Lord produced by the legendary DJ Muggs. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's that's something else for my resume. You know what I'm yes. saying? Now I've I've engineered, you know, his production, you know, exactly. him and we've had some other greats like Buck Wow and Pete Rock. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Not to take anything away from any of the other producers that he's dealt with, you know what I'm saying? But these guys are like, you know, you know who they are. It's not even like, you know, I even have to go into depth about what how important they are to hip hop. Exactly. You know who they are when you know, I say the names. So, you know, so this here is, is, is like, I'm, I'm happy about this shit, bro. It's like, isn't it, you know, man? DJ Muggs, you know, this is, a, this is another one for the resume. Man, so proud of that ball, man. Oof. Yeah, man. Man, brother, it's amazing, man. So I, I'm, I'm glad. Man, that I, I, you know, I, I'm happy to say I was right there for his entire transformation from like, you know, a guy thinking about like, do I want to rap, to a dude who figured it out, like, like, yo, I gotta rap. You know what I'm saying? From being outside to being inside. You dig what I'm saying? From being outside, outside. You know what I mean? Exactly. And you know what, man? So, the way he carries himself, and the way I, you know what. He he he's doing amazingly because of how he carries himself and of course his work ethic and then the people that he's surrounded by. Right. At the end of the I mean, day, he's, that a, makes he's a you thorough a guy. He's a real stand-up dude, and that kind of person will only attract positive energy. You yes. Feel yes, you could feel it, man. When you talk to him, it's like, wow, this guy's amazing, man. Right. Like he you know? he's he's very inspiring to most people. You know what I'm saying? Like after a conversation with Flea Lord, whatever it is you do, you want to go do it and do it better now. <laughs> you feel me? Ain't that something? Yeah, man. Wow. And that's 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 kind of how it is sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Like, certain people are here on this planet to do certain things. You know what I'm saying? And they ready to, they ready to you know, feed off that positive energy, man. They give it to you and you're like, oh, man, I got to take that because uh, you yeah, don't get that, take you don't it get and that use all it. the time. You know you don't get that all the time. Because it's not exactly. You're not going to run across that kind of energy all the time. You feel me? So, French. Yeah. Some people might know, right, how much ground you cover your whole entire career, right? Mm -hmm. Could you name a few so people could know who you produce for back in the day? Uh, okay. We'll start with KRS-One. Mm. Um, I've been in the studio with the likes of Will Smith. Mm. Um, I did a joint for Nas, right? There's a funny story. I did a, I produced a beat for Nas, right? And I, I sent the beat in to um, Def Jam. They loved the beat. He did the song. It's Nas featuring, I believe, Dave, Damian Marley. Then I get, they never released the record. Then I get a call like, yo, Nas went over budget. He's not going to use the record, but we're still going to pay you. All right. Right. So they paid me to produce a record for Nas and it never came out. So it'll probably be on a lost tapes or some shit one day. That's okay. But um, yeah, yeah. But it was done. So we got Nas. We got um, Wyclef Jean. Mm. Um. Who else is on that record? It's, it's Wyclef Jean, Akon, Lil Wayne, and Raekwon the Chef. 
on a re on a remix I did for um Wyclef called Sweetest Sweetest Girl. You might have heard that. It was rocking for one summer. So how what so how was it, you know, like working with all these people, man? Like, you know, because these are these are stars, man. These are people that are still yeah. in the game to this day. Right, right. Well, well, Kara's one, right? I did this record for him back in 1995, right? The record is called The Automatic. This is my first time out, my first time getting real, getting money for my production. My first time out, right? Mm. Now, how it happened, right? This was back when, when producers put their beats on cassette. You know what I mean? So I made a cassette for KRS-One, right? And I had a little bit of room at the very end of the cassette and I had a beat that was really unfinished, but I said, you know what's kind of hot? Let me just throw this at the end just to fill up the tape. And that was the beat he he chose. How about that? You know what I mean? So he's like, yo, come to the studio, you know what I'm saying? You know, and, and let's do this joint. So I come down to the studio and it's me and Karis one alone. And I'm 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 young, I'm geeked. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm like I made it. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? right. That's all. Right. So He's in there, and then um, toward the end of the session, I ain't gonna bore you with the whole, all the details and shit. But toward the end of the session, motherfucking Fat Joe walks through the door. So of course, you know how Chris and uh, Joe are. Chris is like, "Yo, get on my song." So I'm like, "Oh shit, Karis one featuring Fat Joe." <laughs> wow. <laughs> Niggas ain't gonna be tell me shit in the hood. Yeah, how about that? You walking with your chest out, right? <laughs> what, man? <laughs> I'm geeks. And I'm like, yo, finally, I'm in the lab with the stars and I'm doing production. You know what I'm saying this is my dream come true and shit. You know what I'm saying? So the record comes out and people are going crazy over it because I'm on the record with other producers like Premier, uh, D nice. I mean, it's everybody who was anybody was on this record at the time. You know what I'm saying this is when KRS left BDP. Yeah, and this is his first solo joint. First solo, so, you know. The the single was um, rappers that like they don't know. Mm, I know exactly Stupid what that record. is. Stupid record. It was yes, dope. Yes, yes. So, so I'm on an album with the with the with the heavy hitters. Not even just in rap, just in production. Of, in you know, production. I'm like wow. Shit was crazy to me, but that was just more motivation. If I could make it here, let's take another another few chess moves and get to the top of the board. You know what I mean? So how was he? How was he with the with like production wise? Because he's a producer himself and he be killing it. Yeah. So um, how did he like? Was he like uh well he just took the beat and started rhyming on it, or was he like yo change this, change that? Nah, nah. He he didn't ask me to change a thing. Wow, he was like yo, this that. shit is perfect the way it is. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, all right, dope. So I, you know, I came to the studio. At the time, I was I was making beats on a, on a machine called the Insonic EPS sixteen, mm. the predecessor to the um, ASR ten. Okay. Producers know exactly what I'm talking about, but um, so this is a big, heavy fucking keyboard. But I lugged that motherfucker to the studio. You know what I'm saying? And I was living in the Bronx at the time. Ooh. So I lugged this motherfucker down to the studio. And as luck would have it, the fucking boy glitched on me and I lost the sound. But he never knew because I quickly Johnny on the spot. I, I sampled it back and put it back in place. I'm like, all right, maybe he won't notice. And he never did. He never did. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's that producer's touch, man. You know what I mean? Right. Like, Quick it's just, you you got to make it happen on the spot sometimes because anything can happen at any time. You know what I mean? So... How was it working with Alicia Keys? Um, Alicia Keys, well, when I when I met her, she was brand new. She was young, you know what I'm saying? Because my homie Truck Turner is the guy who actually discovered her. You know what I'm saying? And she was his homie. And um, I mean, he was her homie, or however you want to call it. Like, they were friends, you know what I'm saying? And he had brought her by the studio when I was working at a studio called Noise in the Attic, and this is way back in the days before she was anybody, he was bringing her to the studio. Mm. You know what I'm saying? On, and there's a there's actually a song called Boy Meets Girl that Chuck Turner raps on that she's doing the hook. And this is before she was anybody. Nobody knew who Alicia Keys was at the time. And I had produced her, that record as well. So I was with her before she was 
Alicia Keys, Swiss, you know what I mean? All that shit. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing, man. Oof. Yeah. And how did that? Oh, yeah, well, that came about because he brought it to the studio and all that. Okay. Right, now, right. How, how, um, I met, how, like I said, I met her through Truck Turner. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how was it, how was it working with Cameron? Um, with Cam, that was one of those things where it was it was like I gave him I, I gave uh, this, this guy named Schizo. I don't know if you're familiar with Schizo. He's a producer. He produced Get 'Em Girls. Yeah, right. he produced a lot of shit for the Dipset crew. Now I've been recording Schizo since he was mad young, like 15 years old. Wow. So, you know, he he was always around Cam or whatever, whatever. And Cam was like, "Yo, I need this beat." done or whatever because he wanted a certain sample flipped and schizo called me like your friends just do this for cam all right no problem you know what i'm saying got the sample flipped it sent it back next thing you know there was a song because he had a studio in his crib so mm -hmm. they recorded it whatever whatever and did what they had to do on their end i just did the beat on my end just kind of sent it in and they liked it wow so that's we, amazing you know, we, we weren't we weren't in the same room when he recorded it. he was at his house and i was here in harlem Okay. So the, the song came out pretty dope, and it got a great response. Yeah, cause that song was that song did pretty well, man. So you was <laughs> so you was on the charts, like, hey, it's yeah. big French, son. <laughs> you know, it was for a lot of fun times back then. You know what I mean? Oh man! So from what it was back then to what it is now, uh -huh. what are your likes and your dislikes? Um. Now think about that. Well, it's 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 such a contrast in business and the way things are done from then to now. Like technically, right now, there is no such thing as a record company. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's not the same anymore. It's not the same bread, it's not the same because here's the thing: once we lost physical sales like CDs and vinyl and all that. And it went digital and you making money from streams, but you only getting a percentage of a fucking penny per stream. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot different than, you know, selling a even a five dollar cassette. You selling a five dollar cassette and you get a million sales. That's five million dollars. I mean, it's simple mathematics. Yo, I'll be getting I'll be getting my royalty checks and I'll be like, wow, what a shame. Yeah, they, they really screwed the business, especially for people like us who wear music is, is what we do. This is our job. There's no nine to five. There's no side gigs. This is the gig and the only gig. You know what I'm saying? Music or it. nothing. You feel this me? This is it, man. You got that right. Right. So I, I don't like the way the business, what it's become. You know, it, it, I mean, it may come back, but you have to. we have to figure out as a collective how we can do that, where we can get what our music is worth, you know? Yeah. And, and I think I'm, I, I think there's outlets out there that do that. You know what I mean? You got Bandcamp, they take a percentage, but it's less than what the major yeah. is, you know? Yeah, but it's but to be an independent artist is going to take a lot of lot of work where the record company used to take care of a lot of that shit for you, which is why they would take a bigger portion of yeah, the, you know, take it in the, the back end. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And here's the, another thing that 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 really uh, kind of went bad over the years: the value of production. You know, the younger dudes, the younger, the up and coming producers, when they like started selling beats at like twenty five dollars for per beat, that's like, are you fucking serious? You selling beats for Popeye's money? Like, what, what happened? Like, but to them, you when know, when did we look? Like, first of all, I mean, I say, I tell all of, all of producers, look at it like this. No rapper on earth ever went platinum with an acapella. None, never. So they need the beat. You need a beat. The simple logic. You need the beat in order for it to be a song. Me, myself, to me, a producer, I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, the DJ got a lot of props. Yeah, DJ, yeah. DJ got a lot of props. So I feel like, yeah, like you said, the without the producer, they ain't nothing. They ain't nothing in here. So to me, 
the producer is as much valuable as the actual MC or the singer or whatever the case right. might be. Without that, you don't got nothing. You don't move just by the, you know, just 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 by the vocals. No, not at all. You know, you know what I mean, saying? the vocals is important, but at the same time, the music is equally important. You feel me? You know, because you like know. I said, there's been instrumentals that have gone platinum, but never do. I don't. I mean, maybe I could be wrong. Maybe I got to do more research, but. I don't know of any acapella that ever went platinum. I doubt it, man. I doubt it. Maybe it's, a group like Take Six or Take Take Five, whatever their name is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a, a singing group. Maybe they could go platinum with their acapella, but I don't see too yeah, many right. rappers doing that shit. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. Now nah, you're right, man. You're right. And right now, there's actually artists that are putting out albums as acapella that's never been released, and they auction it on eBay now. Okay, well that 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 probably be for something for the for the DJs and the producers to buy to put their beats under these acapellas, feel me? To make songs. That's probably what that's about. But it's but, actually songs that never been let out. Right. Imagine getting your yeah. hands as a producer, getting your hands on a big acapella that was never put out. Blood clot, you feel me? <laughs> Imagine. Imagine that. Oh you get, man. You getting your hands on a on a on a on a uh, anybody, anybody who might be, you know what I'm saying, on a P acapella. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Imagine getting a P acapella right now on some shit you never heard. Right now, huh? How about that? Shit, man. Damn, I know Havoc got a stash. Havoc might, you know. <laughs> Imagine getting a big pun acapella right now. Yo, stop. I'll go crazy. Imagine it, bro. A six, not not even a sixteen. Give me eight bars, man. I'll stretch that bad eight boy out. Bars. I'll stretch it out. You feel me? I'll stretch it out. I'll do four. I'll do four bar verses on it just to stretch it out. They'll take an eight bar verse, make a beat, and then just repeat that motherfucker. That'll be your sixteen. The same eight bars twice, and nobody yeah. would give a fuck. And nobody would give a fuck. That's new. Nope. Nobody get out of here. would care. Fat Joe be knocking at your door, man. Talking about some yo. But yeah, man. So. So French, let's talk about this. Uh, the, you know, me and you talked about it a little bit. You touched on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. What do you think about producers stealing other producers' beats? Man, that's that's whack, corny. That's whack, corny shit. Fuck boy shit. Like, if you're gonna take a motherfucker's beat and slap your name on it, because either a you can't produce. Or B, you just can't produce as well as the next man, but ain't nothing cool about being a thief on any level. You know what I'm saying? And you got a lot of dudes out there that's what, what you call like, I guess, ghost producers who buy other niggas' beats and pay them out where they can say, I produced this beat because I paid for it. I mean, at least the dude who sold it to you got some bread. You know what I'm saying? You didn't just steal it from him. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I feel in my case. If you was going to just straight steal my shit, you could have threw me some bread after the shit became your best-selling record. You want to talk you about that? Me? Come see me. You want to talk about that? Fred? I mean, it's up to you, bro. <laughs> we can well, do We it. can talk about it. I, I mean, don't care, man. <laughs> the bottom line is all I, all I could do is tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? These hey, things listen. happened. And you can kind of put your own thoughts about what you think the real of it is, the real but of it these is. things happened. You feel me? I just don't, I, you know what? Because to me, I feel like, you know, if you're going to be in that kind of stature, right? You're all the way up there like that. You shouldn't be You shouldn't be rocking like that. You know what I mean? At least and if you're going to do that, you know, wet the whistle a little bit. Pay up. Pay up. Pay up. You Bottom line, I mean? man. Damn. You want to be paid for your shit. When you want somebody else should pay that man. But let's talk That's about it, really goddamn it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> All right. So, Dr. Dre, man, I feel like I heard the same beat that you did already. Right. What's up with that, man? All right. There's a... Uh, I got hired to produce a Mountain Gear commercial mm. back in 90... 98, 99. Right? The Mountain Gear. You remember Mountain Gear? They're like the knock off Timberland niggas, you know what I mean? So they hired me to do a commercial. It's, it's Sticky Fingers, mm. um, X1, God Bless the Dead. 
X1. Black Rob, um, Jane Blaze, and somebody else that I'm forgetting. Anyway, so those guys is on this record, right? Which is actually a commercial for Mountain Gear. Mm. We do the commercial. We, everybody lays their verse down. I mix and master the record. I shoot it off. At the end of the session, Sticky Fingers approaches me and says, yo, French, I like this beat. I just got signed to Aftermath. Let me get that. Okay, Sticky. I give him the beat on a DAT. Remember DAT, DAT tapes, the little DAT digital audio tapes? Yes. I had the beat on a DAT. I give this DAT to Sticky Fingers. Sticky flies to California to the Aftermath label. It's quiet for months. I don't hear from Sticky. I don't hear from Aftermath. I don't hear nothing. Then I hear that he got dropped from the label, right? And he went off to do, uh, when when the movie Blade became a series, Sticky yeah. Fingers ran off to, to, to play Blade. And a few months later, I hear, hold up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, wow, what the fuck? So I'm thinking, what are the chances? Mm. I had some bread at the time. I fly out to California. I go knock on Aftermath's door like, yo, what's up? Can we talk? I was told Dre's not here. And if you don't remove yourself from this door, we'll be forced to call the police. Now, I don't want no trouble. Not especially since Rodney King had just happened. Hmm. You dig? So I'm like, all right, I'm out in Cali. Let me just go buy some bud and chill out on the beach and shit and call it a vacation. Call it a vacation. I was really out there to see Dre about my beat. So <clears throat> now people will say, well, everybody got the same records and he could have just found a sample on his own. And he could have just, he, he could have just anything. But now fast forward, I bump into Sticky Fingers at a party in Queens. Mm. What do you think the first words out of Sticky Mouth was when I've seen him? Not, yo, what up, French? What's good? How are you? No. The first words out of his mouth was, yo, I had nothing to do with it. It wasn't me. Mm. Now, when somebody tell you that off the rip, upon once you they see you and you see them, yo, it wasn't me. It was exactly them. You feel me? Wow. Dre probably gave you some money for that dat so he could recreate my beat mm. for his best selling record ever in his entire career. You feel me? And that's the story. You know what I mean, of course it's deeper than that, but you know, we probably yeah, got enough time want, yeah. for a lot of bullshit. At the end Man. of the day, you know. Oh, yeah. And if you want to hear my version of it, it's on my SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Big French. Scroll all the way down so you see Mountain Gear commercial. That's and you it. can judge for yourself whether you think he got me or not. Yeah. You know, but, you know, that's, that's, that's life pretty. goes on. And hey. I just kind of chalked it up to, you know, if the best nigga in the game got a steal from me, I must be doing the right thing. You feel me? Pretty much, man. Pretty much. But, yeah, man, that's that. Pe people have to hear that, man. People have to hear that. So, you know? damn, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, out of all the artists that I know, you mentioned Nas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you know they paid you for the beat and everything like that. What was the craziest experience? I mean, that I don't think nothing could top that off. <laughs> but um, you know, like a crazy experience that you like, damn, yo, like wow, I was right there and then it didn't happen. Or or something that you that 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 you seen it and it happened and you were like wow I can't believe it happened to me. Oh man, um, I guess when 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 track masters I, I used to do work with the track masters. Remember track masters? Mm -hmm. When track masters had me in the studio with Will Smith. Ooh, you know. And that was that was a crazy session because he's now a how, punk dude. Yeah. Now, how were you involved? What were you were actually producing a uh, production in there, or 
you were yeah. help, you were like helping you was a part of like the track masters at that yeah, time yeah um i wasn't like i was like the underling i was being taught they were teaching me production shit and like that whatever tony pope and rich nice which is my older brother wow and um so i was get i got my wings from track masters you feel me i was learning you know what i'm saying i was still on the ledge and then they taught me what they taught me and pushed me off the ledge, like, go fly, you know? Nice. So, I, you know, they had me in the studio with Will Smith. In my mind, I'm thinking this is something they they, they just didn't want to do it. So they let's give it to French. He'll do it, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. But the crazy part about it was, because this is Will Smith, we know, clean cut, you know, fresh Prince of Bel-Air, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I had him in the studio wilding. I had him in there cursing and talking shit because you know he got bars. Let's not get it twisted. Will Smith has bars. And I gave him a grimy New York, you know what I'm saying, kind of beat. And I let him do his thing. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, you know. But apparently, Sony didn't like that. <laughs> Sony oh, didn't really? like the idea of, nah, Sony was upset. Now, now this album that you're talking about, this is the the first the, the one that had Jiggy on it? it. Like I said, like I'm gonna tell you, like once the song was done and we handed it to Sony, it disappeared. Sony was like, hell no, he can't say this on a record. Hell Damn. no. I never saw the, the masters again, and I never saw Will Smith again. <laughs> You ain't try try to sneak a recording real quick, like yo, I'm grabbing. This is my joint. (laughs) Nah, it wasn't. Sony wasn't playing that shit at all. So Sony had them cats in there, like monitoring everything, aren't they? Listen, the tapes was in a whole nother room. You feel me? It was kind of like you you spoke to a speaker, yo, okay, hit record, and there's another dude in the back who worked for Sony actually hitting record. It 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 wasn't going down. It wasn't no. You get me get a copy of that. Nah, son. Sony is, Sony is like the fuck out of here. Yeah, Sony is like, out of here. <laughs> with all that, man. Yeah, Def Jam nah. used to do their thing like that too, man. Def Jam. Yeah. But now these cats are letting you rock out with engineer now. It's you and the engineer inside there, and that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you know, everybody got a fucking studio now. Everybody got a studio. Everybody think they can they can record and mix and master, and that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But it's an art to this shit, B. At the end of the day, mixing and mastering a good record is not something you're gonna learn overnight. I actually you know it, it took because you got a few good plugins or you got the new Mac or whatever. Nah, it took me about ten years to learn how to mix, and I'm talking about like learn how to mix. Like, listen, I went to school to learn how to mix. You know what I'm saying? And it still took me some time to get actually master that shit because you got to be taught on a level where you look at music an entirely different way than just beats and rhymes the you know waves the where, waves start looking like a whole nother world man yeah when you start digging down into you start learning about frequencies and shit now, now you on a whole nother level now you're on a whole nother you know level. what i'm saying and actually what f- different frequencies do to the human ear and all that kind of shit when you start learning the theory behind music that puts you in a different position about how what kind of music you make. Because now you're not just making music for the ear, you're making music for the soul. How about that? You feel me? So so to me, I think that I think producers are getting a lot of props now. I think As it's, they come, should. it's come a long way. Now, now yeah. on the actual cover is whoever produced by, right? Right. Now, my 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 mission is to get that same kind of notoriety for the engineer. You know what I'm saying? The engineer, the guy who presses all the buttons, he's the reason your song sounds the way it does. Yeah, the beat may be dope, and the the lyrics might be dope, but you need that engineer to to, to glue that shit together. To glue it together. Without the right glue, like if you got an engineer who know what the fuck he's doing, stick with that man, take care of him. Because he's, he's the whole reason, like, the Sonics are so important. Like, a lot of people forgot. They just figured, okay, I bought a laptop. I bought Pro Tools. I'm recording. 
Nah, it's way beyond. But the stuff that, sounds man. like shit. Yeah, you know because they're only using. Different. Yeah, exactly. But they're only using the the fundamentals of it. They're not going in right. deep into it. You know what I mean? They have no idea what compression is. They have no idea what EQ is. They, they have know. no idea what real mastering is at all. They don't know. It's a guessing man. game to them. Yo, you know what feature and, I like? Now that we're talking about production and all that, I like that noise right. reduction now, man. Who? A noise reduction. You ever heard of that? Which one? one? Which one? Doesn't matter. Just a noise reduction in general. Just to have that feature in there is crazy. It, I mean, it just like compresses everything. It, it, it nozzles out everything else. It's like a mess. Yo, stuff like yeah, this you, wasn't that back see, then. Here's, see, here's the, the question. I mean, the, the, the big thing, you have to be careful with any kind of, like any plug-in that you're using, whatever, the biggest key I can tell any engineer is to keep in mind that always less is more. Less is more. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to crank everything up to 10. No. You know what no. I'm saying? Thinking that more is, you know what I mean? That's not the case because especially with compression, you compress the life out of your song. It may sound good, but it has no soul. You don't just compress no the life out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep, yep. And that's the same thing with noise reduction because when you're taking out there's certain noise that needs to be there. You feel me? Yeah. And a lot of dudes is, is relying on these, um, like, email your song. They'll master it and email it back. Like this automation algorithm bullshit. That's like buying drawers from the dollar bin. <laughs> you wouldn't do that, right? So why would you do that to your song? Why would you do that to your song? Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. That's, that's definitely, that's like one size fits all. Master yeah. <laughs> Yo, how about that? Ain't that the damn truth? Damn, Crazy. man. Ain't that something? So, yeah, yeah nah, it, it's come a long way from, from, from what it's been, man. So, you know. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I love, like, new shit. I, like, I'm a tech head, a gadget head. I like yeah. to see these new plugins and see what they do and all that. Like, like right now, I, I'm checking out these uh, plugins that have AI in them. Really? Artificial intelligent mastering and this shit is amazing. Like wow. It's gonna make it's gonna make my mixing and mastering better. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So like they they really making it unfair for, for, for certain people. You know what I'm saying? Because so if you don't get your hands on it, you ain't you ain't right. <laughs> if you're not in the know, if you don't know where to get these shits from, and I'm not gonna just give away people's secrets nah, and shit like no that, way. but because uh -uh. somebody put me on and you know, I'll put you on, but I'm not going to put you on on public in a public forum. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Exactly. But eventually I might start teaching. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, teaching that's a dudes good. How to mix the master. Yeah, that's a good move, man. That's a good move. You got to yeah, put you know, that talent you know, out there, man. Yeah, I, I just don't want the art of mixing and mastering to get lost. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they letting these robots and algorithms do it. And then it's like, at the end of the day, too many to presets. Make a human sounding record. I think a human should mix it. You feel me? Too too many presets, man. Some of these things you could just upload your your uh, upload your song and it does it for you. <laughs> right, exactly. Like uh, I'm saying, but I don't know. Maybe I'm old school in that aspect where I don't think that shit is cool. <laughs> nah, I don't think it's cool either, man. I like I like manual mixing. I, you know, I love the knobs. I, I yeah, I miss all that, man. Yeah, I mean, and on top of the fact, it's just like. It adds like life to the song, you know what I'm saying? Because you're gonna mix that song till you like it, you know what I'm saying? And you're a human, but when the machine is mixing it, it's like, how does it know that that shit sounds good? That it you know sounds what I'm good. Saying? Yeah, how about that? Ain't that the so truth? So what ear is it comparing it to? Yeah, ain't that know. the truth? Yeah, no, but that's true. That's true. So. Is there anything that you're working on in the near future that you're going to be fully producing or, you know, anything out there that you want to break um, that you're working um, on? I'm working on a few things. I'm working with a few different artists besides Flea Lord. I mean, well, Flea Lord, I'm going to do a, a project with him in 2021. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Right now, I'm just going to kind of concentrate on engineering his shit for right now. You know what I'm saying? Cause we doing this 12 for 12 thing and it's going, you know what I'm saying? It, it is, it's a lot of work to get an entire project together in one month. You know what I'm saying? 
written, recorded, mixed, mastered, and all that shit. That shit, you know what I'm saying? Do, do you feel like you got a rhythm now? I mean, you about to enter number 10. No, number, what is it, number what? 11. Number well, we're, 11. We're in October. Two? Yeah, so it's 10, right? He's about to drop 10? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how do you feel? You feel like yeah. you guys are getting a rhythm now, right? Because this is like a every, I know he dropped it down to me. He was like 10 songs, it leaves these many songs. And then, you know, he was breaking it down. So he got it down to a science. Yeah, yeah. So, that, you know, we, we get the beats together. Once he decides which 10 beats he likes and it sound good together, then he starts writing. And then we're knocking them out one at a time. You know what I mean? And like I said, sometimes we'll get three or four done in a day. Wow. You know what I mean? So... It, yeah, it's definitely a rhythm at this point. We kind of get in the studio and we black out. You know I don't think saying? nobody's ever done that, too. He's going to be the first artist ever to do that. No, no. And I, I definitely believe we're getting into the Guinness Book of World Records at the end of the year because I've, I've done some research. I don't think anybody in any genre of music has released an album a month for and an we, entire year. And we're talking about official releases, not mixtapes. We're talking about official yeah, I mean, they're, releases. They're, each one of them is on Spotify. Exactly. Each one of them is on iTunes. Each one of them is on, on yep. Google App Store. It's they're an official everywhere. release. It's an official release. Right. So, and like I said, no other artist in any other genre, not even country music has done that. No. No, that's unheard of, man. I'm looking forward to it every month. I'm like, oh, another one. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I mean, I hear the complaints. I'm like, oh, you guys are putting out too much music too fast. But you're paying attention. Like, you're paying attention. Like, how long? Do, like, like we, we did the math already. We keep our albums to usually around a half an hour. You know what I'm saying? I was peeping that, too. But it seemed long, though. It seemed longer It seems for some long because right? it's quality music that has replay value. How about that? But I like hour that. Out you your life, that you heard, if you take an hour out your life and smoke a few choppers, you listen to it twice. <laughs> you feel me? And by the yeah. second go round, you found your favorite joint off the album that you're going to replay all the time. All the time. Wow. How me? about that? How about that? Man. It's like we take, we're taking kind of like old school rules and bringing them up to date with the, with the new school living and all that shit. But it works, you know what I'm saying? Man, how about that? And we kind of changing changing the rules as well because um just this amount of music and this amount of time, you know what I'm saying? We're kind of setting the bar real crazy for the next next people behind us. So do you feel like I, I know there's gotta be people hitting you up? Talk about some yo French. I'm gonna I need to mix down this out, you know what I'm saying, or something like that. Like Cause they know Listen, you already. People know you already. But I'm talking about like the younger crowd now. That you know the rappers that are coming out and yeah, you know, you I know. get, I get, I get calls. I get the uh, the the Instagram DMs and all that. The cold calls to the, from motherfuckers I don't know and never met before. Like yo, French yo, I heard your shit yo. I need my song to sound like that. Okay. Well, what's in the budget? And let's talk. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. you know, most times if you come at me right. We can get we can do some business. You come at me crazy, you know what I'm saying? If which I a lot me, of them do. At, which a lot of them do yo, sometimes. I'll be like, fam, we like, always- all my information is on Google. Like I just won the um the best studio in New York City in Manhattan for 2020. Ooh, congrats on that, so, brother. Thank you, bro. So if you like, if you go, if you like not from New York or whatever, and you come to New York and you Google recording studios, my shit pop up like number one or number two. You know what I'm saying? Nice. So I get cold calls like, yo, yo, what up? This the studio nigga? And it'd be like two in the morning. The studio nigga. Yeah, yeah, because you know, me and my boys, you and your boys, what? Me and my boys want to come to the studio right now. It's two in the morning, first of all. You can't be serious, bro. And I hear these dudes in the back, go, yeah, yeah, we about to go to the studio. Nah, bro, click. Not, not today, <laughs> not today, you ain't. Oh man! Listen, man. Nah, nah. You get all like, kinds of calls, man. It, at the end of the day, it's a business, and you got to conduct yourself in a business manner. You just can't be yo, yo, yo. This the studio, nigga. I don't want nobody talking to me like that. That we got to do business. Like, how you sound? They gonna, they gonna, they gonna learn the hard way when they oh, see yeah. themselves. Listen. When they see themselves doing the same thing, you know, and not getting nowhere. Yeah. 
Right, because that behavior is like nobody wants that. Nobody wants that energy around them. You gotta know how you know to carry. It's uncomfortable. Yourself. Right. You gotta carry yourself. Like if I if, if we on the phone and you turn me turning me off or to even talk to you, like I don't want to be around you, and I definitely don't want you in my space in my studio. You know what I'm saying? That's your home, bro. And at the end of the day, your mother should have taught you better than that. Yeah, how about that? Take yo, a yo, listen. yo, this Take the a studio, listen. nigga. Yeah, nah, we ain't, we ain't doing that. We're yeah. not doing that. I don't need your business. So, you know French, I mean? let me ask you. Mm-hmm. So, with your with your stature and with what you've covered so far in your career, mm-hmm. do you feel like you are where you want to be? Do you feel like? Do you feel like you have it in you to like start like a uh, like I'm not gonna say label, but like a production deal with with certain artists that you want to take under your wing? Do you still have that urge to do that? Because I know when you first start, you got that urge. Uh, listen, bro, I'm still as hungry as I was in '95. That's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like That's I still amazing. Like, I have a love for hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like I was there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was there when they clicked the lights on hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? I was in the parks when they were plugging DJ equipment into the light pole. I was there for a lot. You know what I'm saying? So this is more than just a music genre for me. It's my religion. You know what I'm saying? I was raised by hip-hop. I can relate, So it's deeper than just just making beats and listening to motherfuckers rap all day. It's different. It's way deeper than that. For me, anyway. I can't speak for anybody else, but for me, it's a deep seated love for the for the hip hop, you know, hip hop culture. I tell people, man, yeah. this is my. I, I've man. done I've done all the all all five of the elements of hip hop. I've you know I used to beatbox, I used to break dance, I used to do all that shit, graffiti, everything, DJ. I even used to rap, so I've everything. done it all in hip hop. How about you know that? What I mean, so. Yeah, man, that's crazy. I just stuck man. with what I loved. I loved, I loved um, DJing and making beats, so that's where I stayed in engineering. You know what I'm saying? Because I love to take another person's music and make it better. Make it better, yeah, definitely, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or oh, not necessarily make it better, but make it as best, make it sound as good as it can sound. Yeah. Yeah, bring it to you life, man. Bring it to life. Yeah. You know, everything that's exactly. recorded, everything that's recorded, obviously everything that's recorded, it doesn't, re- doesn't come in great. You know what I mean? You got to make it sound better than what it is. So right. definitely, man. Exactly. I mean, so like, we, you know, we, we in the age of COVID. So a lot of dudes are learning how to record themselves and send me their stems and I mix it, you know, they stay where they're at and I send it to me and I mix it and I send it back, you send which it is back. fine because, you know, this is just yeah. the, the, the world we live in now. You ain't, know what nobody, I mean? ain't nobody trying to get sick, man. Nah, nah. Anybody get sick with that shit, man. <laughs> I'm good, B. You know what I mean? The only one that could get away with that is the president, man. <laughs> right. Well, it's real. It's, let me tell you something about that shit, man. My opinion is real easy to cure a motherfucker who ain't never had it. Yeah, how about that, man? I ain't saying nothing about that. <laughs> but I hear you, though. Like I said, that's my opinion. I hear you, you brother. What <laughs> I hear what they saying. I hear yo, he go, he caught the COVID and blah blah oh, blah. Man, I mean, else. you figure the way he was downplaying COVID serves his dumb ass right, but I don't think no. First of all, he's over seventy. You feel me? And he eats McDonald's every day, so your insides is rotten. And KFC, you beef. catch COVID, you gonna be fucked. You know what I'm saying? Three days, what you was sipping bleach, nigga? I mean, come on. KFC, right? <laughs> uh, Lysol martinis so, and shit. So, French, listen. So, are you ever going to, like, you know, bring up, bring up, like, some people under you? Like, do you, um, oh, are you working on anybody currently right now that you got in the tuck? Yeah. Good. I'm working with an artist named um, Reef Hustle. Good. And he comes from the um, Big Pun camp. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm I'm really excited about this project. Um, we're going to do like a 10-song EP. And we're, we're underway already. We got a few songs done and it's sounding real good. Got a few features like Flea Lord, of course. We got oh, Planet Asia on there, Rashid Chapel. 
So we got a, a couple of nice features on there and it's, it's coming together real nice. It's a beautiful thing, man. That's great, man. That's great to hear. Cause I was like, man, I gotta ask him if he's working with anybody right now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually executive producing an album. I'm gonna talk to you about that too when we get off here. I don't wanna. <laughs> All right, cool. Go, go, go. I'm with it, man. Let's go. But yeah, French man, it's amazing to hear your story, man. I said people got to hear your story. They got to hear the story behind the man, behind the sound of Flea Lord, and everything right. that you've done before that. And look at that, 2020. You know, uh, recording studio of the year. Like that, yeah. like I didn't know that. You know what I mean? Like you never know, you know. So right, right. Proud of you, my brother, man. You've been you've been shining for years, and you're still shining. And you know it's all love, man. Definitely. I appreciate it, yo, Ziz. Thank you, man. Hey, I appreciate man. you even having me up here. You know we brothers, man. You know what I mean? It's all you good. You know, bro. man. But yo, my brother, stay on though, all right? This is let's chop it up, and this is big French, and we peacing out of here. Peace and love. Peace. Peace. You, this is your boy Zaz from Let's Chop It Up. It's official, y'all. November 1st, Life After Dead Drops by G Casino. G Casino, man, you overdid this one, my brother. Produced by DJ Shea. You know what I'm saying? Benny the Butcher. Pretty Ricky Hyde. I mean, Jojo Pellegrino. Vino Music. Dead Beats. Irish. You know what I'm saying? And skill of vision. Make sure y'all go support that, man. November 1st, G Casino, man, is taking over. You feel me? He's taking over, man. G Casino, you taking over? Tell him, B, you taking over. Hey, yo, this is Zaz, man, from Let's Chop It Up. And I'm going to just tell y'all, man, go grab that, John, when it come out. Because if you don't grab it, I'm going to come get you myself. Me and my man, G Casino, going to come get you. Don't make us come get you. Peace. What do I have to do to make you care? What do I have to do to make you love me? It's above me, me fucks, me fucks, me fucks. Uh, what up? 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 What up